live. Ed, it's another day. I get to sit next to you again. You, you know, How's it going? you know, you know. Thank you. Uh, never a dull moment. Lots of action today. Lots to talk about. Good. Some good. Some not so good. Crazy, eh? Crazy. I mean, just when you thought you weren't going to sure, we were saying yesterday, is there going to be momentum in today? That's what we wanted to see. Will it carry through the next day? Then all of a sudden, Altria comes out and says, hey, guys, hold my beer. But $2.4 billion is into Kronos. But not, not, not as uh, powerful as the uh, Constellation move. Yeah. And in, in, in terms of market reaction. Correct. So yeah. far. And that can change. You know what's interesting, though, is that it's, it's had to fight the indices, though, because they weren't doing well. You know, the Dow was not doing well. You know, um, it, all, so it was going, I, it was fighting upstream still. Yeah, the Maybe S&P, the I am starting to not like what I see. I'm mm. starting to get the feeling that the news seems to be, well, I'm not a, I'm not a fundamentalist, so I'm looking at the charts, but yeah. looks things look lower to me at this juncture. And we're going to go into that uh, closer to 4 o'clock uh, break. You're going to bust out the pen, yeah, the pen show everybody hey. what's going on. <laughs> not not a not a pig pen. Yeah. So for today's show, we have the news that's coming up in a few minutes with Ricky. She's breaking down all the the big news highlights from this morning. Uh, Sir James West is coming back in from Miami. Uh, we're going to be talking with him a little while. We have George uh, Scorsis. That is the CEO of uh, Liberty Health Sciences. Uh, there you wow. wow. They were mentioned. There, there, there you go. Let's get the viewership up here. Yeah, they were mentioned in that short report. So he's going to come on and speak uh, speak his mind and talk a little bit of his company about that as well. We have viewer questions. Uh, we're going to go through a little post of answering our viewers' questions. The market closed. That's probably a good time for us to be talking about the charts. And then we have Dimitri coming on as well. For the, He's been in he's a couple a, he's times. A, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's got a really good perspective. Uh, big option guy. Yep. You know, there's lots there. Yeah, and, there. and then we have a little uh, a little clip that uh, we've put together about dry towns, and we're not talking about prohibition you of alcohol. You can put an I and a T in dry, and you get dirty. Oh, just say it. <laughs> <laughs> One day we're gonna we're gonna get Uncle Ed's book of quotes. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's going to be marketed It'll be everywhere. Re we're gonna do that from <laughs> about three uh, fifty nine to four o'clock. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Well, why are we wasting no, no time at all? We're going to go to, do, uh, to Ricky with the news and see what, was, uh, what happened today. She's going to break it down right now. Thanks, and here are today's headlines. Liberty Health Sciences, Inc. is responding to yesterday's Hindenburg report, calling it a short-seller report, attempting to manipulate Liberty's share price through a series of unconfirmed allegations. According to Liberty Health Sciences, the report contains a number of factual errors and outdated information. They believe investors should exercise caution in relying on the statements contained in the report. Liberty takes the unconfirmed allegations very seriously, and they say they will provide updates as they relate to this matter in due course. They say they are committed to good corporate governance and transparency. Liberty Health Sciences Inc. also announced today that they have experienced a significant increase in sales revenue in the quarter ending November 30th, 2018, compared to the same period in the prior year. Revenue also increased by 45% compared to the quarter ending August 31st, 2018. Liberty's recent quarterly revenue totaled $3.2 million and its fiscal year-to-date revenue totaled $6.5 million. And Canopy Rivers increased its ownership stake in Canapar Corp, the Canadian parent corporation of Canapart SRL, an Italy-based organic hemp production and processing platform. The investment increases the company's ownership position to 49.9%. Canopy Rivers is looking to capitalize on the expected growth in demand for cannabis and CBD derivative products in the rapidly growing European cannabis market. MedMen co-founders Adam Bierman and Andrew Maudlin purchased shares on the open market on Thursday. Bierman purchased 342,660 Class B subordinate voting shares at 3.90 Canadian dollars, spending $1.34 million in total. Maudlin bought 335,815 Class B subordinate voting shares at $3.90, spending $1.3 million Canadian dollars. Following the purchases, Bierman and Maudlin each own 13.2% of the company on a fully diluted basis. 
Shares of MedMen, which traded in Canada as low as $3.11 Canadian on Wednesday, rallied more than 20% on Thursday, ending the day at $4.10. The stock traded above $10 in October. Organigram Holdings Inc., the parent company of Organigram Inc., has secured a loan from Farm Credit Canada in the amount of $10 million, which will be used to finance the expansion of the company's Moncton campus. The debt is for a term of five years at a variable rate of interest and currently at 6.7%. The debt is secured against certain assets of Organigram. And that's your news for today. I'm going to be... Absolutely. Hey, hey, uh, oh, we were geez. almost having some off-air talk hey. there. Oh. We're talking We're talking shop. We're, we're sitting here, you know. <laughs> I asked him who his barber was. I said, I need, yeah. I need a better one. He's... Anyway. Look at that slick, that slick cut up there. Yeah. Look at that. Queasy, I don't know if we see Look there. at that. There it is, folks. I feel like the, the <laughs> snow hair. Yeah. H-A-R-E. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to start off really quickly. Um, to our viewers who were here yesterday, tuning in again today, I said I was going to read up on that new uh, Bridgemark development because uh, i just seen it going around. Uh, for those who are watching it, it was actually a... Um, it was, it was somebody who was rewriting the story, meaning that they were just covering it from another end, so no new developments there. I did look through that, so I apologize for that. But my good sir, how the markets look today? We well, got a few you know what, here. Afria, always, there's Afrias at the top of the list. You can talk about five things. I say you, you talk about the S&P, you talk about Afria, mm -hmm. you might throw in uh, one of the uh, FANG stocks like Amazon. Uh, maybe you talk about interest rates and you talk about the marijuana space. There you go. Yeah. You cover those areas every day. It's what's hot right now. It's You're going to get a lot of viewers. Yeah. You got you to gotta follow the money to where things are hot, and that's where that's what it is right you now. You know, there's been talk of an inverted yield curve getting really close where, you know, lo long-term rates are... Mm -hmm are uh, a little bit lower than short-term rates, very problematic. Yeah, and I'm gonna bring that up when Dimitri is on here as well, because I know he follows those things quite well. If those invert, if you get a death cross yeah. on that, uh, that's, that, that's what you're gonna be worried about. You know, I'm pretty sure it's like the last six or seven Pepto years. Can you say Pepto-Bismol? Just say. But th that's one of the best indications oh. for a recession, is, is an inverted yield curve. Right, you know, if you can get short-term money, Cheaper than you can get long-term money. Yeah. Why would you want to do long-term investments? And remember, when you're out of work, or when your neighbor's out of work, it's a recession. When you're out of work, it's a depression. That it is. Anyway. Uh, we'll see what we get there. So, okay. um, going into it, someone just asked here really quickly, uh, uh, good morning for Hawaii. It's probably way better. Good morning. Way better. Aloha, you have way better weather than us. I promise you of that. So, uh, do you have an opinion on Organigram's delayed earnings report? Oh, yeah. I do not, to be honest. I do not have a specific opinion on it. Sometimes they have to. Are you going to defer to me at this stage? Yeah. Because I don't have an opinion defer. either. I oh, <laughs> defer to the crowd. What do you think of it? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have What's a... This, is it, can we put up a chart? Is that uh, something we can do? I'm sure I can find it real fast. Oh. Uh, Who could find it faster? You know, Who I'd like to, I, you know, in, in this recent run here, you know what? I'm not a... Uh... Boom, I'm up. If you've right. got my NDI, you can throw it up there. Okay. Okay. Uh, you'll see it on the screen coming up here in a second if they do have my yeah, computer. Yeah. Oh, what about yeah, what do. about the, what about arresting this uh, founder? Of oh, it's not showing. Fodder. If you guys can do a full screen, because it's not showing the very right the part that we want to see. But um, yeah, no, it's it's been interesting. I mean, they, they really really dropped a few days ago. Uh, they popped back up. They were going almost at 540. They've been fighting downwards um, ever since. There we go. Yeah. So wow. you, you'll see on the right hand side. Um, it's obviously a red candle, but it, it was open. It's still not too too bad. But, but look at look at the uh, low. Look at the low, and then look at where it got to today. Even yeah. though it doesn't look like a lot, that's probably a thirty percent move. It's from, a big from move. the low. It's a big move. And, and and that's the problem in a bear market: sharp, sharp, sharp rallies. But it's very short lived, and the, the trend lines don't really change. And mm -hmm. and as I look at that. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced because I think I, 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 the, the market on Africa looks, I hate to say it, looks, uh, especially if the, today's action holds, which, yeah. you know, it's not, it's down already. It, it was up. Yeah, it's, it's pullback for, yeah. for sure. Um, we've got uh, Ben around the six. I can only imagine you're probably from Toronto. 
Uh, ben from the six, what does NDI stand for? That's the, um, it's a scan for, it's a program that allows yeah, it's some, the yeah. studio to see my laptop. So when we say NDI, really it's just being, uh, can you please yeah, put my yeah. screen We're up? not saying put more money <laughs> in, we're not saying buy it. Yeah, Ben from the six, I hope that answered your question because it did answer your question and I hope you were listening. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> put it for you. <laughs> Yeah, well, 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 so, so. Oh, wow, it's actually down nine. I didn't realize it, it went that big of a dip. It's it? down 9%. And it was up, uh, it was up quite a bit. It was up 15%. I'll, th I'll throw up, I'll throw up it, it the free to, chart It got as to well. uh, 875. What's it at right now? What's the number? Um, it was at uh, six, it's, it is at 686. That's a pretty good difference, So $1. actually. 90, $1.89 to be right on the button. Now, uh, that's pretty, uh, do I have it up here? Yeah, I do. If you want to look up at the screen there. Um, yeah, it was fantastic going into it, but it's really pulled back uh, from, its, from its high. But you know what? If you're somebody who was buying it down in five, six dollars, you're still not complaining. How could you complain with that still? If you bought it so, today so, and it's come back down, yeah, I bet you can complain a little I bit. I got a question for you. <laughs> so, so when we saw the other, the other big rallies, when Constellation, when the money went in, uh, Constellation put money in, did did uh, there was there was more participation like right now we're seeing a lot of little issues little issuers aren't participating in the rally i'm just trying to yeah. not calling out anybody just saying it's not as exciting as it was yeah and it's it's interesting because would you now would you agree uh i do agree to, to an extent and yes i do so i i agree it's not having the same um you know Hump, you know, it's not, it's not doing the same thing as, as console cancellations absolutely put a fury, but you're still going upstream against all of this. Yeah. Like you, when that happened before, there wasn't all these elements that we were talking about. Like the, the free thing is going to really affect the, the market for a little bit. We have to get clarification of this. I think a lot of people are thinking about that. But just in general, the overall markets are still not responding well. But at the end of the day, $2.4 billion came in, $2,400 million came in from a tobacco company. We've been talking about that for a yeah, long time. Yeah, yeah. That is significant. Are people taking it as, as significant? Well, the overall market somewhat says that they are, but yeah. it is a big deal. I, I think it's still it's a very, a very big deal. Big deal. It, it's, it's huge. And, and in a company that has been criticized as being not that strong fundamentally. Yeah. Like, like by Citroen Research, for instance, which had a target of 350, how do they, you know, you want to go, at it now. What hey, is it now? what it's if like you're, $19. what if you're a subscriber 17, to that? 16, 70. If you're a subscriber to that, do the research, they tell you it's going to 350, you sell yeah. it at six and here it is at uh, 18 or whatever it is. Yeah, it's one of those things, look, Jesus. Uh, uh, we're about to, uh, you know, we, we had James come in. So right. let, let's, let's talk with, uh, with James real quickly. Okay. And then we'll come back on that uh, exact point there. But let's, uh, let's go to James now. And we are joined once again, straight from Miami, James West. How are we doing today? Pretty good, Brandon. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it, it's funny, uh, throughout this whole day, we've just been uh, struggling to keep up all the different news and drama and uh, everything's exploding or dropping. It's uh, a lot to take in, but it's been a lot of fun this morning and afternoon. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, Midas letter uh, large cap index uh, is up 6.64%. The small cap index is up 4%. The uh, venture index is up 3.8%. And the CSE index is up a whopping 12%. Yeah, the CSC so has been pretty on good fire. Out there. Uh, I wonder why. I wonder what's setting the CSE on fire. <laughs> Well, certainly, uh, you know, like what's going on with LHS, the other shoe drop from the, uh, the Hindenburg, uh, Hindenburg guys and the QCM guys. And uh, now, they're, now they're trying to drag poor George Scorsis through the mud with uh, LHS. But uh, doesn't look like they're getting much love on their thesis as, as far as it pertains to Afria. Uh, you know, Afria is up 4.2%, was trading around 8 bucks a little earlier. 27 million or 20 million shares traded so far and uh what's what's the story with lhs it doesn't seem to be get, being that hurt either so i mean if the uh, sole complaint is that the insiders uh participated in an egregiously priced private placement 
before acquiring LHS, well, uh, that just underscores the bad behavior that has come to characterize the cannabis space, I guess, but it certainly doesn't seem to be panning out for their short strategy. Yeah, there hasn't nearly been as much of a reaction from the second Hindenburg report opposed to the first. Uh, and even with the first, isn't it funny how quickly people forget? Uh, although that's not the right term, because I'm sure people still remember, but in, in terms of the stock market. And then you had um, Kronos Group uh, have a partnership with um, Altria for $2.4 billion. So that definitely really got things going. And uh, it, it's been interesting though, even with that news, it's nice to see that there's still some stocks that aren't moving or actually still relatively down. I think people are finally starting to look for companies that uh, they actually think are gonna be winners, opposed to just you know playing that little, uh, the dart game, just throwing whatever you want. So it, it's been nice to see, but- Dart throwing game. But yeah. uh, actually, we're having George uh, on the show, and we're going to be talking about uh, the report and what, what's going on there. So it is interesting because I'm very curious to see uh, the thoughts of investors and, and thoughts of the market, but also the thoughts of the company itself on that report. Because like you said, if, if what they're going on is um, what I do see as, as a rather outrageous uh, private placement, that's not illegal, though. And, and, and these are being done, the more you start looking into different companies and the more you start looking at the cannabis space, this is done quite often. And that doesn't mean that that's right, but this is something that I think as we mature as a sector, but just in general, as people start uh, social media, as we start looking into these sectors more, we're gonna start realizing that this does happen more often. I think more people are gonna be a little bit more careful before uh, trying to do it again in the future. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's why investors need to learn to read the listing statements of these companies before they invest. So we really understand what the cost basis is of the founding shareholders. So in the case of Liberty Health Sciences, you know, 230 million shares at uh, one tenth of a penny. That's quite a high incentive for them to be selling continuously. Well, though, all those insiders are going to be escrowed for three years on average meaning that 15% of that stock will be free trading upon the public listing of the company, 10% every six months thereafter until the last tranche, 15% is left, in which case that comes out too. So every six months for the next three years, 10 to 15% of 230 million shares will come to the market with a cost basis of one or less than one cent, one tenth of a cent. So if you think those guys are gonna be sitting on that stock, absolutely not. And does that stock represent an impediment to share price appreciation for shareholders who come in later? Absolutely does. So for me personally, uh, you know, I've never invested in Liberty Health Sciences, but I would want to ask George if, uh, you know, I would want to ask George if he was aware that that private placement was done before he became CEO. I'd want to know if he participated in it. And then I'd want to know who are the major participants in that, as well as what the escrow terms are. So one of the potentialities is a lot of times, uh, and I haven't had a chance to read the listing statement, but a lot of times these private placements are done before a consolidation of the shares occurs prior to the consolidated entity actually listing and starting to trade. Whether that is what has happened in the case of Liberty Health Sciences or not, I I'm not in a position to say right now, but I'm going to do that research in the next half hour here. And I will have that answer and the questions for George appropriately ready for when he comes on. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the question is, can the company develop enough uh, corporate sort of performance milestones in the, in the, in the context of income and profit such that it can absorb that level of share pricing, even at a tenth of a cent per share. But for me, if it's a startup company, I mean, you look at the share price, maybe that's why the stock hasn't been able to get much past a dollar forty, dollar fifty, even in its best trading days. So, you know, from the context of Liberty or from uh, Hindenburg Research and QCM, I mean, it's it's like closing the barn door after the horses have already been let out. It's it's not really, is it material to be pointing out that fact now? 
or would it have been more material when Liberty Health started trading a year ago? Well, that would have been much more helpful. Right now, it seems to me that both Hindenburg and QCM are desperately trying to accelerate and intensify their attack on the credibility of anybody associated with Afria or Liberty Health because they're seeing this resurgence in the Afria share price. They're seeing this absence of response in the Liberty Health share price. So it's like, well, what good is a short strategy that sets out to undermine the credibility of companies if it doesn't actually achieve a lower share price? Sure, we saw uh, Afria go down to almost $4 a share, but the question is, did uh, did Hindenburg and did QCM cover at that level? Well, we'll find out when we have them on the show probably next week when I get back. So we'll be talking to them. We're still trying to drag Vic Newfeld out of the uh, out of the out of the shadows. Um, you know, he's 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 sort of hiding behind this protection of uh, lawyers telling me he can't say anything, but we know he's been on Bloomberg and on B BNN, rather. So we'll get the real story out of Vic yet, come hell or high water. But, uh, you know, for investors, it's it's too bad, you know, because uh, Liberty Health, by all accounts, we just were down at their operation in Gainesville, and unanimously, everybody who is there is, is impressed with what they saw. They've got a real business. So one of the unfortunate side effects of these egregious fundings out of the chute is that these few guys who actually have very find the experience for retail investors who decide to invest because they're blowing out shares that cost them a tenth of a penny, which is almost nothing. So it's crazy. You know, I really feel I'm, I really feel sorry for George because he's building a real business and it's a real company. And, uh, you know, the fact that he's got these these peripheral sort of early stage investors who are predatory in their approach is it's just too bad. Yeah. And it is a shame because a lot of people um, are, are, are looking at some of these companies uh, over the last six months that have had issues uh, one way or another with either consultants or uh, promotion or these really, really cheap shares in these early, early private rounds. And a lot of people call these companies scams. The company itself, and, and I, I've looked into Liberty Health before, and I actually uh, really liked them as a, as a U.S. play. I still do when it comes to what the, the business is and what they're creating. Uh, it is a shame where now there, people are questioning, is this a scam, when really, as you said, this is a company that's, that's actually doing something. They have tangible assets. They are growing, and they are in, in, in really you know, opportunistic areas in the United States where I think they can get it done. But when you're looking at 200, and I think it was 242 million uh, shares at one tenth of a penny, if it's trading at a dollar, that's a hundred times you're in the money. I don't know anybody who wouldn't sell at that. I mean, that, that's fantastic if you ever get to that point. And most people go most of their life ever without ever getting a 10 bagger, let alone a hundred bagger. So it'll be very interesting uh, in that respect. But it's, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I hope that a lot of people are, are watching these types of events that have been occurring uh, across the CSC and even the TSX Venture uh, over the last little while. And when they're making different companies, you know, it's okay for everyone to make money. I understand putting that together. I'm all for it, even buying companies that are ar at arm lengths because you have friends who, who specialize in different I'm all for that. But let's, let's remember that investors are coming into this, real people and real money are coming into this. Let's be fair. Everyone can make money. You can still make millions of dollars. Let's 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 just have a you know a, an even playing ground uh, for for these companies. I think people will respect you a lot more uh, if that's what more people did. Yeah. Well, you know the the reality is that these guys do these financings and then do their best to obscure them in the filing documentation. And typically, these financings will happen in the private co ahead of it merging with the public co <clears throat> as part of the effort to obscure it. Usually, the listing statement will disclose these prior financings. And so, you know, the, 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 the viewpoint of the exchange is that if investors don't read the listing statements and understand where all the shares have been priced, uh, then it's it's you know it's caveat enter buy or be buy or beware if you're investing your money in a company where you don't actually have a sense of what's going on in terms of 
the capital structure, then you deserve exactly the experience you get because there is no substitute for doing your own due diligence, even though we have to caveat that by the same, as a result of the rules of the same regulators who allow these companies and these financings to occur, we have to caveat that with, but don't listen to us, always consult a registered investment advisor in your jurisdiction, <laughs> and I'll bet you nine times out of 10, he wouldn't even know how to find the listing statement online. Yeah, and, and I, I love that plug because it actually is, it really is important. Don't just listen to something James is saying, I'm saying, Ben's saying, Ed's saying, whatever it be, Carl. Don't listen to just us. You know, a lot of the things we say is to point you in a direction of where to look. And, and that's when you start learning how to, to look for these things. So even for myself, when I first started investing, I never looked for this stuff. I'll be honest. I went to school. I did my CSC courses. Like, And, and funny enough, when you actually start investing, you start realizing it's a whole new ballgame from any schooling or anything you were taught before. But when I start going to companies, I'll usually scale in a bit. If I find something that I want to ride some momentum because good news came out, I'll, I'll get a little bit just to make sure I got my feet wet with it. But then I turn to our community, I turn to friends of mine who I respect, and I'll start saying, okay, let, let's look into this company quickly. And, and you try to find one of these uh, smoking guns. You try to find one of these things that might burn you because I can't you know, count how many times when I first started investing, I go into a company and then next week, 20 million shares unloaded at, you know, they're in the money by multiples of, of two, three, four. And then, you know, they got to absorb all of that. So if you're watching this right now, do your due diligence, understand that there are short sellers out there who have a purpose for all this kind of stuff. Uh, I do not believe either of these companies are scams. That's my personal opinion. Uh, were some things happening that were questionable and need answers to? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, it's important for people to realize that the whole market, the idea, the reason, the compelling reason to start a company is not to save the world, is not to help the children, is not to solve the world's problems, it's to make money. And so the, the whole value proposition of the stock promoter, the guy who builds a company, and the incentive for the entrepreneur to raise money and create a company is to create a pool of shares in the company and sell them for much higher levels. Buy low, sell high. That's the man. CEOs there and say, I'm so passionate about this. I'm so passionate about that. It's like, well, okay, sure you're passionate about rocks and plants, but I bet you you're more passionate about making money, more passionate about spending money. And so investors always need to realize that they are the exit strategy for not just the founders of the company, the entrepreneurs involved, but also for the financiers who do these financings at the investment banks. You are the exit strategy, and if you think you're not, then you're you're just in for a horrible ride. Yeah, so that's, that's the bottom line. Just make sure you're aware of what this environment is. It is it, it, it ain't no charity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's always each, there's another leg where one leg is a liquidity event for the leg before it, but like you were saying earlier though, hopefully you've, you've been building that company, you have proper news releases, proper developments so that you can withstand that uh, liquidation event where, where people are, are, you know, they went in earlier, they took a risk on a company, they deserve to make some money off that company if they're doing well. But you, you just hope that they're doing the right job and keep moving forward. So this is gonna be something that we're gonna be, uh, Ed and I are gonna be talking about a little bit more uh, going into this close here and we'll be able to uh, see if, if they were successful at bringing down these companies or if, uh, if investors have a very short memory and now they're just, uh, they're just seeing green and they're seeing that Altria investment and it's, uh, it's go time possibly. Yeah, well, it's going to be uh, certainly, a, certainly a frothy close to what has been a super frothy week. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a relief to see this rally that was, uh, I guess, catalyzed by Kronos Group and Altria Group's investment. Um, but again, you know, this is this is why the chicken little mentality, when everybody starts running around crying doom and gloom and the world is over and the sky is falling, there are always going to be these macro catalysts out there that take the whole market higher that have the effect of lifting all boats. And so no matter how doomy and gloomy it seems, remember, it's never going to be the, the night is often darkest before the dawn. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, James, I always appreciate it uh, to speak and, and just going back and forth with what you think about uh, what's going on in the market. I hope you continue to enjoy Miami. 
I'm keeping your seat warm, but you'll be back soon. And I uh, look forward to talking again in the uh, real near future. You bet, Brandon. I'm looking forward. I'll see you there Monday. And back to the studio. Always a pleasure. He's always got an opinion. Uh, Sir James yeah, does yeah. Uh, all the time, and it's a, it's a pretty damn good one a lot of the times. Yeah. But we do have uh, what we were talking about on there. We are talking about Liberty Health Sciences. And we do have the CEO uh, on, on Skype right now, actually, uh, George Scorsis, CEO of Liberty Health. Welcome to the show. Hey, George. Ed Molesky here. I, I got So I can, I can imagine it's been a pretty uh, uh, action-packed last few days uh, as I have lost my audio, if you'd like to take over, Ed. Oh, there's my audio the, the, back. The audio's back, yeah. But it's been a very action-packed last couple of days for you, and I just want to let our, our viewers know, uh, just right off the bat, uh, any instances or information in regards to uh, Vic and Afria we are not touching on during this interview. This is about yourself and, uh, and Liberty Health Sciences. So I just want to make sure we made that clear from the, from the get-go. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's important to note that you know what what short sellers' actual intentions are. I think that's the most important aspect of what we really want to discuss. Short sellers are not there for the actual overall interest of the common shareholder. They're there for their interest of their specific individual or the activity that they do. Um, you know, it's it's extremely important to look at the fundamentals of the business first and foremost for any shareholder. Um, but when we take a look and we look back at this group specifically or any other group of this nature, we see that facts are inconsistent, they may be outdated in many times, and they may not be fully uh, prepared um, or investigated properly. This group uh, released several reports this week and other reports that were tied to other companies, and I think they demonstrated that you know, they were using wrong addresses of the individuals. They're tying wrong, uh, wrong people to the business. There was inaccuracies in their statements, and that really followed through to what happened yesterday with Liberty Health Sciences. And when there are certain aspects of it that, you know, were clearly inaccurate, when we look at, um, they presented an individual who's a director of the business who has never been a director of the business or a board member. That's just one simple call out that we can see inaccuracies. We consistently see share counts that were presented, presented to demonstrate nefarious activity. When there was corrections made to a form nine with Vic Newfeld that didn't have 2.4 million shares, but 240,000. Also allegations of ties to certain individuals that are non-existent or don't participate in our business. You know, the foundation of the business is extremely critical for us to really understand, is it a strong business? Is this a business we want to support? Is it a business that we want to invest uh, against? And Liberty Health Science demonstrates that. And today was a great example of it. Our, our quarterly earnings were presented. We had 45% growth, which again, we're, we are on pace to have a great year. We are on pace to deliver against everything we've said. We have $20 million cash, which will bring us to fulfilling all of the deliverables that we suggested. We are moving forward into Ohio, and those are truly the facts. Um, we'll come out with a more fulsome response with regards to every single one of the items that were listed on this report in the upcoming days. Yeah, it is, and I appreciate your time because it, it, you always do have to look at two sides of a story. And as you said, uh, there are elements of this report that you guys are taking the time to address uh, individually. So we'll stay in tune for that and like to talk to you about afterwards. Uh, uh, recap on all those different elements. But one question I find investors are asking the most, uh, especially live as we're looking at some of our questions, is the private placement itself. Uh, and one of the questions was, uh, it, did this private placement, so it was a, uh, 242 million shares at a tenth of a cent. Uh, this is before it got amalgamated uh, into what is now Liberty Health. Uh, were you a part of that private placement or is, uh, or are you on board when that private placement happened? So I wasn't part of that, but obviously it's important for me to be aware of that, and I am. 
Um, what is important there to note is, although it shows 240 million, that was prior to the consolidation, which in fact was really 80 million. Um, so that's one third of the business. What, what's important with that is, um, although that is notable shareholders that participated in that, most of those shareholders or many of those shareholders also participated in subsequent raises, and they're also still shareholders in our business. So it's, it's, it's easy to depict one single um, line item and suggest that individuals simply purchased at a very low rate and ran, but many of these individuals are still part of our business, have invested in our business, and are still shareholders. What is also important to note with that is, when do these become free trading and will it cause downward pressure on the stock? Well, these became free trading four months after list. There isn't a future date that's gonna hit, and actually as a result of that, you're not gonna see any future downward pressure on our stock, but more so, if they wanted to exit the business, they would have exited by this point. We're seeing that they haven't exited the business in many cases. So um, it, it, it's, it's, it's important to have the full picture and to understand how it's gonna affect shareholders. And that again is another um, great example of how we can really provide the full picture and transparency to our shareholders. Yeah, and that was actually another question that I was going to ask you uh, that you've already gone ahead and, and said was, uh, what would be the escrow on that, or what is the uh, you know how long is that going to be uh, vested for? Because a lot of people if they see really really cheap paper, they want to know you know is this going to come out tomorrow? Is this going to come out six weeks from now? And that's something you know, have to take in consideration. Um, I believe you just said there they they are have been free trading as of today, uh, or as of in the past, and there's a good chance that they they've already been run through. That that's right. It was four months after list was the whole period, so it's been it's been well over a year. Okay, yeah, and that's an important question that people wanted to know. Uh, well, there are other elements that we did. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah. George, Ed Molesky here. Uh, you know, when market, markets go up and they really go up rapidly, the, the, the general mood, everybody's slapping you on the back, and, it's, and yet, you know, they usually push markets too high. And, and then the inevitable correction takes place, or s corrections, as we've seen, and you know, everybody's all of a sudden, you know, they got the magnifying glass out. Uh, people want to see the I's dotted, the T's crossed. You, you know, it, it's look. There's there's ups and there's downs, and if anybody thinks they're going to go one way, it never has happened, and it never will happen. And so. I just wanted to say that as an observer, and I've observed at markets for, you know, four decades. Anyway. Yeah. No, it's a good point. A lot of people yeah. just expect it just yeah, to keep that, going Yeah, that's up. a good point. And that's a good point. Today, today, obviously, the Dow is showing a correction in the marketplace. Um, and, you know, I think for investors or shareholders, it's important in either way, shape, or form they really need to look at the fundamentals of the business. Um, that's so important. It's so important to do, your, to do your own due diligence because there are going to be times of the marketplace either correcting or ups or downs. Um, but you know, really, it's about uh, it, it's about the foundation. Does the team, have, does the group have the right foundation? Do they have the right management? Do they have the right strategy to be leaders in the space? Right. Absolutely. Well, if you don't mind, we, uh, we're going to go to the news release that uh, you had er, uh, earlier today in just a moment. We had some, uh, some questions both through, uh, we went on to the uh, Liberty Health Sciences uh, Facebook group and asked some questions, but also our audience as well. And uh, George is there and he asked, can you give us an update on Massachusetts? Yeah, Massachusetts, we continue to do our due diligence in the marketplace. It's a really interesting market for us. Um, I hope our shareholders can understand that we uh, we are extremely disciplined and don't want to jump on a market uh, prior to us doing our proper due diligence and understanding whether this would be the right group to partner with, whether this would be the right time to enter, and this would be the best use of our capital expenditure. So we are still doing our due diligence in that space. And, and thank you for asking as well, or for answering, I should say. Uh, another question from our viewers is, um, 
looking forward guidance, uh, Kentucky hemp producer, uh, and how they're looking to tackling the farm bill in general uh, for you guys. Because that's, that's still, I believe it still has to go through House and the Senate still, but that's a big change if it goes through. Uh, how are you preparing yourself for that? Yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's, it still maintains a little bit of arm wrestling, I would say, between the House and the Senate, and they're still going through some of the finer points. Uh, do we believe that it will uh, pass? Absolutely. And we think it's going to happen very soon. We as Liberty Health Sciences believe extremely um, strongly against this aspect of the business. We believe um, that hemp and CBD related hemp will actually change the entire business. Uh, the reason for us being extremely diligent and moving into other states is when this bill passes, it is our opinion that this will be a major part of the entire segment and potentially cannibalize um, certain states in their activities. We have a plan in place. We have products that are CBD related. Um, and we also have partnerships that are pending release that we are going to divulge to uh, all of our um, to the entire network. Um, but we are extremely bullish in this. Uh, hemp CBD is an important aspect of, of the entire business that we really need to stay closely um, looking at, and that's that's one of the pieces that we're we're really excited about. And thank you. And I've got one more question here that actually multiple people asked, and we'll go into today's news release because you had some uh, financial results in there. And it was uh, who currently owns Copper State Farm? I believe that was an Afria asset at one point. Are are you guys fully own that? No, so that that, that was an Afria asset, um, and uh, Afria decided to divest of it uh, based on their TSX listing, um, and they uh, no longer have ownership with it. Okay, is that uh, fully ownership from uh, for yourselves? And, and that's right. We have no ownership of Copper State. Okay, gotcha. Uh, well, jumping, jumping thing, and I appreciate very much for answering those questions from our, our viewers and different investors uh, of your company. Uh, you, you came out with news today. Uh, you had some pretty good earnings there. Do you want to discuss uh, what was in that uh, press release today? Yeah, but this is really what we want um, our shareholders, our audience, all of our supporters to really see 45% growth. It's, uh, it, it was another great quarter. Um, we accelerated our stores. We're up to seven. We're going to have another seven open by the end of February. Um, I am currently in Miami right now. We are in the last stage of completing our Miami location, which will be in the upcoming days. And we're really excited about that. And the subsequent stores, our patient load also increased by 46%. We're doing all the things that we suggested we would do. We want to be a leader in the space. Florida alone is one of the most uh, captivating um, states that we would want to be into. We believe it's going to be one of the biggest states as well. And that's why we're doubling down on Florida and making sure that we don't become extremely fragmented. We are extremely focused on Florida as the, the place that we want to put the flag in the ground um, rather than losing focus of it. And we have some more exciting news. But really that patient uptick is, um, is demonstrating that a few of our strategies are working. One is, are we opening the right dispensaries in the right locations? And is our customer service model working in terms of retention and bringing people back and not seeing slippage of our patients? That's one, we are seeing that. The second bet that we made was that patients want national brands. So when you see products in our stores, such as Mary's Medicinals, Hacks being exclusive to us, we're seeing patients come in and they're saying, we're so happy that you have these products. We've used these products before. We recognize them. It's about building trust with the patients and about them coming back to our stores. And so it really looks like our strategy is, is coming together exactly as we've outlined and uh, great results. And, and we expect the next quarter to be even stronger because we anticipate more stores to be opening at a more accelerated rate. Yeah, and in, in Florida, actually, you know, for, for people who are still trying to catch up to the United States cannabis, first off, uh, where have you been? Uh, we've been talking with us for quite a little while now as, as we're starting to realize, wait a second, uh, America is a pretty big economy. But if you look at Florida specifically, uh, what, 
it's, it's amazing how much revenue by some companies, and, and now you guys are really starting to see that as well, uh, is coming from Florida. There's a huge demand there. And, and I believe your news release, I'm reading it here, you're gonna have uh, 14 dispensaries by, the, uh, by February. Uh, of next year, so in Q1, and, and it's interesting there because that's ever growing, and I believe it's just medical now, but I wouldn't be surprised, almost every state so far, they've had medical for a certain amount of time, uh, REC has followed. Uh, what are the, um, the political grounds right now for recreation in Florida, because I, I actually haven't looked into myself, is that nearby or are we still a little bit away for that? Yeah, I think the sentiment by the average um, consumer or patient in in Florida is that, you know, it should be an adult use state. Um, we believe strongly behind it. I believe some of our competitors also do that have just most recently entered. But really, what is it about? Um, you know, I want to I want to touch on how do you win an adult use state? It's about having the right locations. Um, it's about having the right brands. But it's also about having um, the right operation. Uh, I, and that's why I want to really touch on our 225,000 square foot grow that we're building for not today, but for tomorrow. Uh, we have 486 acres. We're building a state of the art facility. Um, I welcome you and the team to come join and see as many other, others have. Um, and this is really going to be the supporting aspect of our business. Um, operationally, adult use is not too dissimilar from medical. You need to be producing high quality. Uh, cannabis that is safe, effective, and consistent, and that's where we think we're going to be leaders. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, we've got some people in our chat rooms here wanting to go more into this uh, short report. Uh, what I say to those uh, investors right now, uh, as you said at the beginning, George, you guys are taking the time to go through this bit by bit and give a response there. Uh, People that put out short reports like this, it usually takes them weeks uh, to be able to go there to film things, to do due diligence, and then we all of a sudden act, uh, ask for a response in 24 hours, 48 hours. I, I mean, personally, as an investor in, in different companies, I think that's a little bit unrealistic. So uh, for those people asking, we, we've touched on that already. Uh, we will get back to that uh, in a future time when you've been able to come out with your response, and we'll, uh, we could always take it from there as well. Thank you very much. Well, George, I appreciate it very much for coming on and, and giving some time for us. Uh, always a, a pleasure, we, like I said earlier, first off, like you said, I'd love to come out to Florida. If, if we're going out there, Ed and I Let's will go. be there. Let's jump uh, on a plane. We'll jump on a plane and there's Let's snow go. everywhere. But uh, I appreciate you coming on, uh, taking some of the harder questions, taking some of the better questions, but just in general, uh, being in here and giving us your time. We appreciate it. Looking forward to hearing your responses on the, uh, the short report that was released yesterday. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Sir George, I just keep putting sir in front of everyone. You know, you know what? I, I think that's a classy touch. I think that's a, something you should, that's, your, that's yours. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's being honest, though. It really is. I mean, look, guys. I, I, I'm talking I, about the sir thing. The sir. Oh, I thought you were talking about my response there. No, no, no. But, <laughs> but, but, no, but, but that. The sir. No, it's, 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 you know, I, it's be nice to people. Yeah. And you know what? Whenever you make someone feel a little better, you feel better. Yeah. And <laughs> just saying. I, just I'm saying. a millennial by heart. We've talked about this a couple of times. I was not raised a millennial. Uh, I grew up in uh, a, a different time, Ed. Yeah, but, well, we all do. Yeah, we, that's very true. It's very true. Yeah, you could have been born a day after me. It was a born I was a born night, but not last night. Yeah. But, but I, I just want to uh, like bring that up just one more time, though. Yeah. You know, there are people who want us to go really deep in these uh, different types of questions. You have to understand that there are legalities behind this that... At the end of the day, you, you need to address them properly, take the time. It did not take Hindenburg, uh, you know, two days to do this. They, 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 they put a lot of effort into all the different elements. Short sellers time, put a lot more effort into, they do. The, into uh, research than, inv uh, I'll say investors, I'll say traders. Like, yeah. well, traders look at charts basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but investors, you know, and, and you know, I mean, a lot of, Probably young money's in, in this, right? Yeah. Younger money. Yeah. Because, so, you know, 
And, and there's, there is a lot of younger money, a lot of uh, people uh, coming in and investing. But yeah, g give time to have that out. When those results do come out, that's when you, you read them. If yeah. they are not satisfactory yeah. to yeah. yourself, yeah. Proceed to, to ask more questions because you do have a right as a shareholder to, to have answers to a lot of your questions that you ask. I, I'm going to uh, look at their. Keep that in I'm going to look at the results uh, on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, Friday already. Where did that come from? Yeah. It's already almost. It's, all, a, it's always now, isn't money, it? Isn't it always week? now? It's always now. We were talking about that earlier. It's always now, except for before. Well, at that time, it was it now. Was now. <laughs> and, when, and when tomorrow comes, yeah. it will be now. <laughs> well, hey, we got a few minutes here uh, really quickly. Why don't we quickly see what the markets are doing? We have okay. nine minutes okay. left okay. in the power hour. All right, you know what? And we're getting close to ho, 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 ho the payments. Yeah, ho, <laughs> ho the payments. <laughs> I think that they actually say that, right? They say, come in and buy something and ho, ho, ho the payments. Okay, yeah. so why? So let, let's see, what, what's the, uh, let's, I'm gonna start with the S&P here. Oh. Here we go, it, it's, and it's right in front of me. Uh, we guys NDI, and now, I can't remember the name of who asked that before, but you know what I mean now when I say that. <laughs> yeah, 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 so we got, we got, we got the. Uh, Bam! And there's your chart. Okay, so there's our chart, Let, let's just. Uh, oh, yeah, the pencil. You know, you know, we're getting more action in here, and a little bit lower than here. Here, here we go. So we had this, this reaction low it, that's still intact, and then a little higher here, but now a little, little bit lower here, but closing above. It, this is getting complicated. What I don't like here is I looked at it, and I, and I actually checked the number. That high in, in, in here is a little bit lower than the high here and a lot lower than this high. So you got sort of that, but it's, it's rolling. And you know, with this, this arrest in the, uh, with this Chinese woman, I mean, I hate to bring in facts. No, yeah, the, the Huawei founder's daughter. Yeah, and he, I, I read big. somewhere, they say he's looked upon as the Bill Gates of China. China. Yeah, yeah we, we, I don't think, Mar I know markets aren't stupid, and we've seen them come back since yeah. then, but I don't think we, we've seen the last of that. I think that's a, a relatively serious thing, because it's not just that. Yeah. They're also saying, for the last two years, they've been investigating Huawei. Uh, they don't want them in the 5G network, because right. they don't want uh, China to, to, to be in the network of the United States. It, it goes much deeper than this, guys. This is big. And I this, can't speak this, to that actually, no, it, I don't. And you, you're, a, you're a big reader, and you're following these macro things. This is big stuff, right? Because they're saying they were involved in, in Iran somehow and there were supposed to be sanctions and the, the 5G thing, big thing, big yeah. stuff. And I'll tell you, in, in, to your point, you're talking about volatility. Look, look at the length of these candles ever yeah. since we broke down here. Ever since we broke down, we've got this sort of sanity here. It's a nice steady trend. Yeah. And now daily. Huge swings. Two, three, four hundred, eight hundred points. I mean, two days, six percent. Holy, where are we? <laughs> we're here. We're in a trader's paradise. We're here, and we're here, and we're and it's now. And and, and we are in trade. <laughs> and it's not buy and hold right now. Is you know it? what else is here and now? We are going to, uh, and it literally says, and now we're going to be going for the questions of the day. Let's go to figure okay. out what the first one okay. was. Okay, okay, off she goes. So my question is, do you think come April uh, 2019, when weed is more accessible, uh, it's going to change in the stock market? Is there going to be a significant growth uh, in the public space? And that's, a, and that's a good question because absolutely. I mean, right now. What's, what was the question I had my I had European, uh, Basically, he was just asking, you know, come April when we start having uh, the, the, the legal stores in Ontario. Right, right, And just right. in general, as recreation starts picking up, uh, are we going to have increased demand? Are, is, there, is it going to be growing? Absolutely. Is it? Just think of it. If you're, if you're not a consumer of cannabis now, and there's no store to go to and interact with, you're not necessarily gonna go on, on, the, um, on, on the internet and start buying all this cannabis. But if you're able to go to a store, if you're able to talk to someone and say, hey, you know what, I usually don't like consuming cannabis because I get anxiety or I don't like to be you know, stuck to a couch. The difference between the, the internet and being in a store, someone will be like, hey, you know what, then maybe you should try a nice sativa. Maybe you should try a nice indica. Maybe you should try this strain. Maybe you should try something that's higher in CBD and you know don't have 20 or 30 percent THC. What about, high, what about THC. high in life? Oh, well, it'll be high in a couple oh, of things after that. There's won't a you? concept. <laughs> 
So I think it's definitely going to increase uh, the sales for all these companies as well. Is going to increase because now you have a whole other avenue. And just in general, uh, if you look at again the macro side of things, not just the way they're able to sell, but the the amount of product that's going to be coming up uh, in these different stores. Most LPs are like 20% capacity of their funded capacity that they're building. Most of that's going to come into play. Q1, Q2, Q3 of, of next year. That's when we're going to start seeing numbers actually going. Uh, I can't remember who I was talking about. Was it you possibly? You can't judge it by one quarter. Oh, you know what? It was you're Daniel talking to me from. Or you're talking to the guy behind me. Oh, to you, pointing right okay. at you. Uh, it was Daniel from uh, Canopy Rivers. We had a nice talk afterwards. He was talking. You can't just look at one quarter. You have to look at two, three, you have to, four quarters. You have to look at a trend for this. This is an emerging market. We're not even started yet. There's the camera. <laughs> but there's another question. Let's see what the, the second question is. All right. Hi. Do you think the cannabis sector is overhyped, or do you think there's real potential in long-term growth? I have no. Ba I have no battery. And we're back again. What? We like what? to we like to enjoy ourselves here. Can I say uh, you know about about the hype thing? Yeah. When you look at the market today as it sits relative to the last, I'm talking about the marijuana space. Yeah. I think the market tells you that right now, there's been a substantial element of hype. Whether it was intentional or it just happened because money rushed in and blew the valuations to extreme levels, mm -hmm. that's, that's not the point. The point is, if it's sitting where it is, relative to where it was, yeah. Then, then sharper pencils, uh, uh, what? Sharper, <laughs> <laughs> sharper pencils. Sharper pencils. <laughs> In other words, yeah, what, why is it where it is? Why isn't it still there? Yeah. Why did it back off this much? Absolutely. Now, but, but, <laughs> and, and, and again, you know, sure, there's the U.S. issue, you know, there's, there's a lot of other factors and, you know, whatever, but, Things usually go too high yeah. and correct, and now they're in correction mode, although we've had a couple reasonably good days. But Africa's back to 60, 680 yeah. from uh, 8, 885 today. And it's funny, uh, Javante Music, I don't think that's your last name, I think you might be lying. Javante Music says blooper reel, and you're right. We have this fancy thing in my ear that tells me what people are saying. And during that last question, it ran out of battery. That's what happens when you're on a live television program. So well, we always like to have fun, we always uh, like to keep going and making hand gestures and keep all this, but uh, it will be on a blooper reel, it won't be today. We'll probably get that blooper reel on uh, for at least Monday. But uh, it's one of the things when you do it live. You just got to keep going with the flow. Things change, things happen. And if you keep talking long enough, you give enough time to have our guests be able to sit right next to me. And, and today, that's Dimitri. I did it. Did it. <laughs> how's it going, man? <laughs> hey, good to be here. How, how's your day been? It's been, it's been a crazy day. You know what? It's been nonstop. Uh, I've been trying to research everything that's been going on. Uh, when you're trying to put on like, like one of the shows, like be on here, it, it, it's funny how hard it is to be plugged in with everything. So yeah. people are trying to have, like, have short talks with you and you're being rude, like, I can't talk, I'm in my computer. <laughs> yeah. You're just trying to, because there's so much going on. But that's why you're here. What have you been looking at lately? Yeah, so it's an exciting week. Um, you know, since we have this S&P 500 chart, I don't know if we have it up on the actual screen, but um, yeah, let me see. It's the first time I'm playing around with this. I don't know if this, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's very interesting. But anyway, let's just talk about it. So something that you're not really going to see that here in terms of the technicals is when we were first selling off, it was mm -hmm. because people were scared about rates going a lot higher. So way more rate hikes. Yeah. Right now, what people are scared about is lower growth. So that's okay. actually what's changed recently uh, between these two last declines. Yeah. And you can see this uh, if you look at, for example, TLT. So this is a bond ETF. Mm -hmm. So you could see it's, it's a long bond ETF. So it's very long dated treasuries, US treasuries. And it's, decli it's been declining since around October or so, end of September, October. And then only recently it started exploding because yields are coming back down. The market's scared in terms of growth. And that's part of what we see in terms of the NASDAQ, cannabis stocks. People don't want to be in high risk. Um, stocks when yeah. we're going potentially into a recession, or at the very least, when the, uh, valuations are elevated, they don't want to. They don't want to be in these high beta names. Yeah. 
Um, generally speaking, if we're talking about, so yeah, this week was crazy. It's for, unreal. If you're a trader, you're just, you're, you're licking your chops. You're oh, yeah. loving life because the swings that we have gone through have been incredible. But uh, that talk you said about small growth, mm -hmm. it's been really interesting because I, I know that, um, you know, in the States, um, who's over, Polos is in Canada. Who's over the States right now as, as the Fed? It's eluding uh, me. Pal, uh, I'm pretty sure you kind of switched the stance a little bit yeah, recently. In two months, in two months. So October it's 3rd really quickly. up until I think uh, end of November, he said something and actually today there was a Fed uh, one of the people on the committee that said, hey, maybe we shouldn't do a December rate hike. Yeah. And um, all this stuff with Huawei, the CFO. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, it's, the tariffs aren't that big of a deal. The issue is, if they actually do get implemented, growth gets pushed over a cliff. Yeah. And then that's going to impact valuations. And that's what you're starting to see being priced in. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to see like, these kind of big moves. Even gold, for example, I'm going to throw it up on the chart here. Let's see if I can. If okay. we can bring it up on the screen afterwards as well. Hey, we did. Yeah, you can see it too. You guys got Beautiful. a great setup here, but um, I don't know if, yeah. So this is the what? This is the six month. So longer term, you're seeing the exact same thing where earlier in the year, gold declined really hard because people expected way, way more rate hikes than there actually was. Yeah. Um, anyway, but speaking on the Canada space, I mean, I've been trading it. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity, um, especially with the last. Would you say the last? We we closed pretty pretty well. It wasn't that bad whatsoever. You saw, yeah. You know, it wasn't sector wide, uh, but I mean, can it be uh, closed green? Aurora, Can Trust, like a lot of things. Mm. Some of them in double digits. Did you like what you saw from the last two days, where you saw two pretty good days in a row? Yeah. Finally. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna be the bearer of bad news, I think. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I was surprised by how far Afria fell, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, those three days, 20% uh, gap down opens. Uh, very surprising. Um, I think it's because they didn't address it fast enough. Yeah. So there wasn't any kind of really concrete rebuttal. Um, at the same time, you would think this Altria news would be a lot bigger of a catalyst. It was for Cron, and honestly, I saw Mike Gordstein, you know, doing interviews, he's smiling, like, good for those guys, awesome. Uh, they're gonna do well, but, um, yeah, uh, I think there's gonna be an overhang with at least Afria for a while, because investors, uh, they didn't like this ride. The ones that didn't sell, they did not like this ride, and that's what you're seeing, this very aggressive profit taking, while the whole sector is very green. Yeah. Um, so no, I think, I think um, we got the Fed backing off a little bit. You had the China tariff thing kind of also coming off. So the question now is um, how Africa is going to respond to this on Monday, because I think there's an expectation of a statement, mm -hmm. and also how markets are going to, where they're going. So if you look at the SPX, um, we, we've been trading in this range, so just one year range maybe. Yeah, sorry guys. I'm just, just, no, it's not your computer. You're doing great. <laughs> Go with the flow. Um, listen, we're in this range and we're really close to the lows. So as soon as this range breaks, you know, you're gonna, the next support is down here, 2500s. Then if you look back, you know, the next support after that, I mean, it gets really mumbo jumbo in terms of fib levels and all this other stuff, but there's not a lot of support right under there. Yeah. And so what happens with risk assets at that point? Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it's not going to be good. Yeah. And so for me personally, going into this weekend, I made some trades um, on Afri. I made some trades on Kiraleaf, um, Ianthus. Kiraleaf is actually here. had a good day today, up 12%. Yeah, so actually I got out today. So nice. um, um, I got, Beginning or end? Uh, uh, be, near the beginning of the day, I think around, anyway, un, not important. But yeah. uh, uh, it was a good game. Not as good as Afri, of course. But yeah. uh, uh, I had enough exposure there. So, you, you know, got to diversify somewhat. But hey, you know, I like to be in a lot of cash right now. Let's see how things settle on Monday, and we'll go from there. Yeah, and it's really, uh, really interesting. We talked about this on yesterday's show about uh, the mentality of a fund manager. And going into December, you got some decisions to make, obviously. 
we've already been seeing it, uh, or it probably have already happened, where they've de-risked their portfolios uh, mm -hmm. a good amount because at the end of the year, you get uh, basically you get voted on, like you know, you get ranked how risky you are compared to what you're getting. If if you're low risk and you got 10% earning, 10% uh, on the year, and you're high risk and got 10% on the year, one fund manager is clearly better than the other. Mm -hmm. So you're de-risking a little bit from these kind of plays. But a really interesting part was the window dressing aspect of depending on how the first part of this month goes, you really start deciding as a fund manager, if, if you think the, the market's not going too well and, and you know, nothing's got legs, mm -hmm. you're actually gonna start selling off to have more cash to be able to, sh uh, to show your investors, like, like look, mm -hmm. I've got cash, I'm ready for 2019. I'm gonna be able to be in a good position to buy deals. But if you're in a good position uh, early in December, you're like, look, I'm fully invested. I, I, I'm reaping this little bit of a balance right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've never done fund managing myself. I, I haven't, but I like to listen to people who have. And that's that came from someone who ran a mm -hmm. fund for a long time. It's interesting. We're kind of like a, we're, we're trying to decide, yeah. is it going to be a terrible December or is it going to be a good December? And we've had a really, really mixed week. Yeah, no, definitely. So typically there's a Santa Claus rally. Um, that's usually expected. And it's because a lot of these hedge funds, they're t chasing performance. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to what you said, but it's more like, hey, if the market's going up and I'm up 8% and my competitor is fully invested and he's up 9%, I'm gonna look even worse if the market goes up another 3% because there's gonna be that spread. Yeah. Uh, the difference this year, it might be, uh, it might be more risk off. I mean, let, let's see if these supports hold or not. That's a really big question. Um, but you know what, as funny as it is, a lot of fund managers uh, on the cannabis side, I mean, besides some of the guests that you have here, I've heard of stories of a lot of people shorting these cannabis stocks, actually. Mm. I won't name any names, but I've heard yeah. like very big firms that are involved that have been uh, uh, since October, a little later than that, uh, have been shorting these names. Um, so that's definitely some of the overhang you've seen uh, since October. Yeah. Generally speaking, I, the market is reacting in just various names that I'm following um, and with a lot of panic. It doesn't feel very stable. Um, people are nervous and yeah. I, wanna, I wanna see where things settle, settle down and I have a lot of cash personally. Yeah. And, and you know, cash, as we saw with Afria, you know, you can, uh, execute on some opportunity. Yeah, absolutely you can. And, you should, and people forget that cash, it can easily be a component in your portfolio. You mm -hmm. should have some cash. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, you can really see it, uh, you saw it more, lo more so last week where you, you'd get a good day and almost by the end of the day, you see a sell off or you get a quick green to red the next mm -hmm. day. Over, oh, that's why I was so happy uh, in the last two days to see, wow, we, for the most part, we had two green days. Can we do that Monday? You know, you want to see this little bit of uh, our market saying, like, "Hey, are you selling off? I won't sell off. You don't sell off." You know, like people are trying to figure mm -hmm. out what's going on, because there are a lot of people still who are, who would rather be a lot more in cash because they're not uh, confident with what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But you see a few days in a row it could work. But I, I'm just going to look um, quickly look at what the overall indices uh, closed out on because I don't think they closed too well. They were mostly red most yeah. of the day. Oh, two and a half, two point three percent. it looks like on the SPX. Is that what it was? Down. Oh, that's oh what yeah, it says. all of them are down. Yeah. S&P 500, 2.3 and NASDAQ down three, another 3%. Yeah. They're so going to beat. Somewhat reminds me of 2015 before we had that flash crash on Monday, if you recall. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's going to happen, of course, but yeah. uh, usually a lot of weakness into the weekend. There's going to be a lot of people thinking about how they're going to allocate their portfolio going into Monday. And I mean, Altria News is probably the second biggest news we've had in this sector ever. Yeah, it's I think huge. it's fair to say, right? It, it honestly um, is, yeah. In terms of size of investment, it literally mirrors the, the Canopy Constellation deal in terms of what, what percentage of the company they're taking, right? Because uh, I think the full amount is 53 or 55% for Constellations as well. Mm -hmm. Altria, same thing. And you would think a lot of these names would be up a lot more um, than they were today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. especially the ones without deals like Afria. Yeah, and, and I was saying with that uh, with Ed earlier, uh, yes, that's true, but at the same time, it, they were going against the stream. Like, look what we just saw about the American markets. Usually, we, follow, we follow the S&P 500 and the Dow pretty pretty closely, mm -hmm. and those were getting pummeled. Well, they were, uh, the camps were still fighting to, to stay green. Does that mean something? A little bit? You see divergence? Is that, you know, is that going to be something massive? I don't think so. We, like you said, you still need to see what's happening on Monday. But yeah, that's a massive deal. And, and people, I don't think, are really recognizing how big that is. Maybe it's because it hasn't really caught the, the mainstream uh, media as much. I, I found when Constellation came out, it was 
yeah. everywhere. We see Altria come out. And it's almost like, well, you've been telling us about this for the longest time. I don't care anymore. And now it just yeah. happened. So part of the thing <laughs> is um, going into the Constellation deal, the market was actually rallying. You had volatility that was really low. Everyone was really happy. You know, S&P 500 was green week over week. Um, one thing to note is that the Altria rumor has been around for months. Mm -hmm. Then there was a breaking of this news, you know, a couple of days ago, earlier this week. So the market was already prepped in a sense. So Cron was already up 10, 20 percent since the rumor, and then this this happened. So the market was a lot more prepared for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, it, and it's hard. You really do need to catch things off as a surprise. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, for anybody who, well, hopefully most of the people watching this follow stocks and the different elements that happen with them uh, on the macro level. Uh, when you look at a, an interest rate, if everyone's expecting it uh, to go down and it actually doesn't, you know, when, when, you, when you, it goes against expectations, that's where you can really get these violent swings uh, for the positive or for the negative. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like what you said, though. If you're expecting a rate hike, that's probably already been caked into prices for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not as, uh, you know, either a shock if it's the wrong thing or it's not, or it's not as uh, good of an event if it was a good aspect as well. So I think, yeah, we were, we were mostly preparing for Altria, but again, this is big tobacco. I know people don't like big tobacco, but we had big alcohol sure. come in. Constellation was the biggest of big alcohol. Now we've had big tobacco, and we have had big farmer already with, with Tilray uh, to an extent, but nothing mm -hmm. to, to the amount of uh, money and percentage ownership as, uh, as Constellation's canopy, Altria, and, and Kronos. But I, I do hope people realize this is a big deal in the sense that there was a lot of uh, expectation for tobacco to come in for a long time. And even though it was rumored from time to time, it never happened. Mm -hmm. Now it has happened. So it'll be really, really interesting to see what we come up with with Monday. Because I, I, I want to see that Santa Claus rally. My, my portfolio wants to see that Santa Claus rally. Yeah, <laughs> understandable. Um, you know what I'm hearing from a lot of people in the space right now? Um, sentiments really cooled off in terms of the cannabis space on the institutional side. Um, this is just my hear hearsay, mm -hmm. but um, I think this Afria situation has really damaged sentiment significantly, and everyone's really upset about it because there's lots of companies, quality companies, that are RTOing in the next couple of months that will get a, probably a poorer reception now, given uh, the situation. And two, um, you know, Afria, this whole situation with Scythia and the shells and all that, questions surrounding that. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger question now is. You know, there's a lot of other companies that paid a lot of money for a lot of other acquisitions. And you saw, I think, Canopy come out today and say, uh, you know, that, that they're being extra transparent with all of their acquisitions. Um, and so I think, I think a lot of people are going to start, you know, after doing all that due diligence on AFRI, they're going to start scratching their head and saying, huh, all these acquisitions Aurora did, or Canopy did, or any other large company did, how do they make sense? What did they actually pay for? And could a short, another short report person, because yeah. this guy didn't do that much DD, to be honest with you, right? Like, he didn't even take some of the pictures, right? I'm sure you guys have debunked it or talked about some of the issues with the report, at least. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure many people are thinking, you know, why can't I write something like this in profit? Like, that was yeah. pretty easy to do. Um, there's a lot of questionable transactions that have happened in the space. So let's explore them. Yeah, and, it, and I do hang. think it's it's... It's really going to spartan up a lot of investors in the sense that you do need to really pay attention because we've been shown now on a couple of instances, uh, again, I've mentioned it numerous times, this whole Bridgemark fiasco that uh, mm -hmm. is still ongoing, of course, and you have to treat it as such. It's not definitive just yet, but a lot of these different elements are starting to show that these either brokers, bankers, whatever it be, um, consultants, consultants who aren't consultants, they're... I wouldn't say taking advantage of a little, I think that's the right wording, but they're, they're making situations that are just too fortuitous for them compared to the shareholder. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see that in, in CSE, TSX, and uh, TSX companies. Uh, New York Stock Exchange companies, when speaking of Afria. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's gonna have a little bit of a debt where people are gonna be wondering, is my company doing that? So, exactly. uh, you know, if, if, if there's companies out there who are listening to this right now, you know, I, I think a smart action uh, to take right now is, is to, Show everyone, this is what we paid, this is what we did. Mm -hmm. Do the due diligence first. Don't be reactive, be proactive. Because mm -hmm. if you're coming out and you're showing me, hey, look, we paid this, but the reason we paid this is because this is the potential revenue that we think we're gonna be getting in the next little while. Okay, I get it, that, that's good. It's mm -hmm. the, the doubt and the unknown, I think is that, uh, 
you know, kind of uh, umbrella over over the over the sunshine of the sector, if you want to take a really really cliche. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's winter. <laughs> common, but it, it's winter. But uh, uh, but just in general, I think that's I think you're so right. People are concerned that that's their company, and I, I hope not many of these come uh, come forward. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess we'll see how things wash out, but. Definitely, I think if you're investing in the space right now, you want to be in names that are relatively cheap valuation-wise, haven't done too many crazy acquisitions, right? And I think the U.S. is still way more attractive than some of the Canadian names. Uh, absolutely. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on. It's always a pleasure uh, talking shop and, uh, and going through the canvas space, but also the sector and, uh, and markets in general. But speaking of uh, talking shop, we were, we were going to buy retail showers and we were, that are setting up shop in the new year. We got a clip to show you right now. The provinces and territories within Canada are responsible for determining how cannabis is bought and sold within their jurisdictions. So you may think since cannabis is legal within Canada that we're going to start seeing retail stores popping up everywhere. That's where you're wrong. In Ontario, the provincial governments left it to the municipalities to opt out if they want to uh, by this coming January. So, so far, it, Markham, Richmond Hill, uh, King Township, East Gwillimbury and Oakville are all uh, towns and cities that have said they intend to opt out. Uh, none of them, to my knowledge, have officially done that yet. For the ones that opt out, I'm a little bit at a loss as to you know, what the benefit is aside from pleasing the constituents if that's what they want. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to have jobs um, that are otherwise available. Your residents are going to be able to consume it anyway. They can order online or they can drive to the neighboring city and purchase there, which is very easy to do, especially in a densely populated area. So I'm not really sure what many of these cities are going to be accomplishing by opting out. Other cities, like Vaughan, are still on the fence about opting out and are trying to gather the information they need to make this decision. I'm just really nervous about it. I don't know that I'd approve, but that I don't know enough about it to say you know, that I would approve. Well, there's beer stores, so why not cannabis stores? I think it lowers the tone of the neighbourhood, frankly. And residents are voicing their concerns in council, wanting to know all the facts before they make their decision. So I'm suggesting we opt out. Um, until we understand all the findings. I think the financial aspects are known, but the unknown implications are not known. And that's why I'm suggesting we opt out. I think that our approach is the right approach. Uh, you gather all the information, you make intelligent choices, and, and uh, you make decisions uh, based on, on facts. And I think that's what we're going to be doing. Whether or not municipalities have come to a conclusion on if they'll be opting out, they have until the new year to come up with a definite answer. For Midas Letter Live, I'm Adamo Barbieri. Vaughn and Mark and other places, uh, you were not right. Actually, you were, in my personal opinion, you were wrong. And uh, you're fighting something that has been fought for a hundred years. And we all decided that we're going to push forward with this because it was actually all propaganda, the fact that it was illegal in the first place by the oil companies and cotton. So we'll get to that point in one point in another. But uh, I'll tell you how I really feel later. Yeah. Everybody has an opinion. That they do. And everyone has the right to their opinion. That's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, right as long as you're not shoving it down someone's throat you're saying yeah. hey and that's why we have a voting process and you know yeah you mean the voting process that made it legal all across canada that voting process exactly yeah. no I, and i don't mean to be rude I, I know people put a lot of time into making these decisions and it's it's smart and i don't want them to be upset for coming on our show i mean thank you for that very much but no i think it's a when, it, it, you're, you're for one you're missing out on that the business in in your city anyone's just going to drive the city right next to you you can't fight legalization of cannabis anymore it's not going to be fought in this country it has been fought and we've just pioneered the g20 in the entire world so then why are you still trying to fight it? If you, you want to fight you, something, fight alcohol, you, fight you, opioids, you, you fight know, You know, I was just going to say, like, look at, look at the damage alcohol has done to society. Mm -hmm. It's legal everywhere. I mean, there's a few places it's not. But it's far more legal than illegal. Yeah. And, and, and you, you know, I mean, look at, I, I, I know the, the smoking pot. You don't see very many people getting violent smoking pot. Alcohol, yeah. not so sure. 
Yeah, I think we have bigger things to fight. Um, but bigger you know fish what? to fry. Bigger fish to fry. It's all about education though. It's about education and we need to continue to educate people that un unlike in the 30s yeah. uh, where they're going around with, with knives, stabbing people like uh, the, the propaganda of Reef of Madness was saying, that's not what happens when you smoke cannabis. Um, but, uh, but no, it, you know what, um, I, th I, th I think they're wrong personally and as Canadians we just need to help educate people that you can consume cannabis in, in a in mature and responsible fashion. If you're smoking a huge blunt or hitting a nice bowl before work yeah, or stuff like that, yeah. that's silly. Well, why are you doing that? Come on. But if you're just enjoying with friends, I'd much rather, uh, a lot of people would much rather consume cannabis opposed to alcohol. And if you look at your body it's and what your mind, your body. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah, cheaper. You know, you, you know, uh, Budweiser doesn't want to hear that. No, they don't. No, they won't. But uh, let's get to the charts because I can keep going. I might sound yeah, a little bit worse what? if I okay, keep going. Look, so, so my chart of the day, I think uh, my, my revelation of the day is uh, the action in the S&P today, which I thought would be a lot better. And here we are with this red candle, and it, it, it looks ominous to me because I'm starting to see, and we, and we touched upon it, we, I'm starting to see this formation here looking like it might just, uh, it might be rolling over. And I, I don't wanna, there's a line there, and there's a line here. And we're gonna come to a decision here, and, I, I, we, may, and we may already be breaching this, you know, and, and that's a crude thing. If you draw it a little, care, a little uh, more carefully, it may not be so obvious, but mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, look, if this breaks down here, this is something that will get a lot of attention. And if it breaks down and rallies back, fine. But, you know, it just seems as though, you know, and to what, what uh, our friend was, that was just here said, you know, you know, now it's not so much about interest rates, it's about growth. Like, yeah. it, it seems to be some discussions out there. It's tough, right? How, it's really, really uh, tough in the sense that there are so many different elements that you need to think about. And we don't mean to say that to our, our viewers as in, oh no, I'll never be able to understand everything. Yeah. I've been researching economics and finance for a lot, better part of the last like eight or nine years uh, throughout different schooling and being a part of the market. And I still look at things and think, what do I know compared to what's out there? Well, well. But the more you know, the better you get at yeah, it. Yeah, and Socrates said, I know one thing, I know nothing. So. Ooh. Getting philosophical. And here we are. On the philosophical Mayas corner, Lives. Friday night. You know, get ready to <laughs> probably go to a party and probably drink too much and probably <laughs> indulge too much, but yeah. it's legal. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I know there's a lot of different elements going on, and it'll be really interesting, actually, as much as people are yeah. saying, uh, why are they talking about interest rates? They're so boring. Yeah, but interest rates rule the world. <laughs> so you should be paying attention to interest rates because it has everything to do uh, with your uh, investment and not everything as he's making all these noises beside me. I'm being attacked here by uh, <laughs> control. But, anyway. but no, you've got to be paying attention to interest rates. It's important because I think now, if we go into the end of the year with... <laughs> Why am I singing solo? So the blooper reel continues. You want me to sing solo? I finally am uh, the tall I'm person. Low. I'm at the sing tall person. Solo. It took me okay, wait a minute, 29 now. years now, okay, to become the tall okay. person in the room. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I, I, no one knows that I'm four foot eight. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm standing right now. Okay. So, so just so okay, the secret's out. Yeah. Okay. But no, we got to figure just out. Just call me Napoleon. Call me Napoleon. Okay. Because anyway. if, if we do get a point where they're they're going to say, you know what, we might not raise interest rates like we thought we were going to because yeah. we weren't able to. Yeah. If, if anyone could just watch this, this is a whole blooper reel. Oh, we're going to watch it? No, we're not. We're going to go just me. But uh, why, don't we go to, why don't we go to questions? Cause we, we said we were going to take questions and we never did. We said we were going to do bloopers at the very end according to the list bloopers. right here. We've already done them. Live yeah, on the show, we, we did the bloopers. bloopers. <laughs> Our whole existence is a blooper. <laughs> but to the questions, I'm looking at your, the chat right now. Who has a question? And let's see if one of us can answer it. Uh, as long as it's not, uh, what are you doing oh, later tonight, Ed? And what's your number? Because people want to talk to you. They want to hang out with All right. you. All right. What? We'll do the Jeopardy music. Can you do it right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's sort of a, an epic week, right? We, yeah. We've seen a lot of things, a lot of, you know, but people will start looking at things. You know, like when people start to look at a lot of the sector now, they're going to look at a different, you know, more. Yeah, it was a while. There's, there were some crazy yeah. swings. And again, traders love this, but 
I'd like to see it, it's it's unfortunate yeah. to see two good days with the Dow and uh, an S&P 500 and Nasdaq just going like right in the gutter. That is that is yeah. unfortunate because you want to see those going together. Uh, there's still a lot of different elements that are out there that people are wondering about. Yeah. Uh, Ed, how is the leather coat? Great question. How's oh, your leather coat? Oh, you know what? I couldn't keep it. He couldn't keep it. No, no, no. But I got full credit. Oh. Got full credit. So what coat did you get with that? I, uh, I, I'm i just going to, you know, keep that money in a sitting up there in case I want to head down to the o OCS sometime. Oh. Get a little extra cash. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, know you can't smoke leather. Well, you probably could. <laughs> anyway. Uh, just curious, has anyone looked into Doug Ford's label company? And do they make the tax stickers? Uh, I do not know myself. I would not doubt whatsoever. Tax um, What's a tax sticker? Uh, the tax excise stickers uh, that Ben Ward had come on here. Oh, okay. uh, I did an interview okay. actually with him when he was talking about okay. they had to uh, glue it on. Uh, I do not doubt whatsoever that governments choose their friends and family and their different elements. We've seen it every single government, uh, whether it's the liberals, the conservatives, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I would not be surprised, but I just don't know if that's uh, all yeah. too relevant. Because if it's a good price, it's a good price. If it's not, you know, it'll uh, just go on an ominous bill uh, later on, and it, we'll it, figure it out about it and not care. It's occurred to me, uh, no matter who gets in power, your life really doesn't change that much. Yeah. You know, you may think it does, but well, if you're on the peripheral, on the periphery, you might it might change quite a bit. I guess I don't know, but I, you know what, it doesn't seem to change that much. Your your yeah. life is you know, for you to live. There you go. Well, can we put, um, can we put Frank's question up so that our viewers can sure. see as well? Sure, let's uh, do it. we're not doing the questions because I like this question. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, hello from Belgium. First off, welcome from Toronto. I love it. They're all the way in Belgium watching. How do you say that. hello in, in, uh, in, the, in the Belgian language? If I had Google open right now, I would find out for okay. you, but I don't. Okay. But the question is, Hello from Belgium. Do you foresee the Canadian cannabis company still being on top in uh, in five years uh, from now, or might it be companies from other countries? Wow. So there is a lot packed in there, and there's going to be some speculation coming out of me right now. The reason for that is that when you look at companies like Aurora and Canopy, let's just pick those two, just because that's what everyone talks about for, for large companies, um, the, the, the two largest. There's a reason why their expansion in Canada and across the world and their dilution of shares even is so aggressive. It's because they know that it is only a matter of time before the curtains come down, before everyone else is let in the boxing ring. And all of a sudden, they do have to compete with these global juggernauts. Because Canada's not really known for global juggernauts. Yeah. I love our the country I'm in, but we are not known for that. So they're trying to grow to be the biggest. In five years from now, I actually foresee a lot of these American companies being the ones who dominate the world. I do. Why? Because that's what happens right now. You cannot they have bigger, the bigger, consumerism uh, and, and the, the marketing and the money in America. Cash. You can't. If it's you all can, about cash, right? It's all about cash. And if you think that that's not the case, I think you're trying to be too patriotic. I, I yeah. love the countries that we're doing. I, I do think some of these American players, once uh, it's legalized federally and they can export again, uh, I think that's it's quite dangerous for, for these other countries. I don't know too much about European countries. I think you guys are actually uh, quite far behind. So I would have to see more to say that a country in Belgium or a country in Europe or Germany I got a question could be better. For you. I got a question for you. So, so other countries get involved. Will they be able to do it cheaper than Canada? Because Canada, it's not a, it's not an inexpensive place. But maybe mm -hmm. relative to Britain, it's probably like London, England's pretty expensive. Yeah. You know what they're gonna? You know what they're gonna do? They're going to be overseas. They're going to have an export license where they're going to grow it for five cents a gram, uh, five cents a gram. Then export it to Canada, where they have a small facility where they make it into oils, then sell it from Canada and go out elsewhere. That's exactly what's going to happen. Is that right? Oh yeah, that, that's my, yeah, that's my I, guess. Yeah, the point is, I guess what I'm trying <laughs> so, to so yes ask and no. in, a, in a gen, <laughs> yes, it, can Canada compete on the world stage? I think I think Canopy going back to what I was just saying because we were talking about in general. Yeah. I think uh, the likes of Canopy Aurora. We'll see if some other ones can really come up as well. Canopy especially, which unfortunately uh, in this sense is now American virtually or will be very soon. I think they are still going to be the dominant players for many years to come because they're they're continuing to grow at the same pace. But let's see who has the most dominant players. I think it's going to be the U.S. 
I think we're going to bloopers, though. Bloop great time. Week, great week. Just rewatch the let's, show. There's a couple let's of just them. sit back and then let's see how foul, fallible, fallible we all are. I just there's another blooper. <laughs> this almost has the same look to it as Alifia. Oh, that well, is Alifia. Sorry, sorry, Paul. <laughs> driving the bus. Who's that? Is that Ed driving the bus? Yeah. Ed the head. Come on, model that sucker right by okay, the runway. Right Come on here, big boy. Whoa. Whoa. President and Chief Executive Officer of the blah, 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 blah. In meds, ongoing R&D efforts in biocell. Yeah. Patent pending. Blah. No. One more time. Sorry, Simon. Canada. Blah, blah, blah. I made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> this is the kind of coat you could probably just wear with nothing else. Well, that's uh, no.